Hey everyone, and welcome to RPG Horror Stories with D&D Doge. In today's video, we have a story about a player that makes a Dungeons & Dragons character so vile that the Dungeon Master has to kick him, a story about the trials and tribulations of playing D&D online, and much more. But first, Nipsey has a request from you all. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I really like this toy. Thanks, Nipsey. I hope they do. But with that said, let's get right into these stories. New Guy Has Issues is Asked to Leave by Reddit user Pretty as Frog. Background I'm a woman, and I'd been playing with most folks in this group for a couple of years. For the record, I'm in my early 40s. Most of them are young enough that I could feasibly be their mother, and I've been known to occasionally do things like make them cookies, or help them learn various adulting skills like proper cover letters and resumes, and the like. They sometimes call me Game Mom, and there are occasional instances of hugging. The overall group is about 15 folks, I'm not the only female player, who all rotate around as time allows. My actual son and husband are both gamers, but neither of them were present at this event. As it happens, for this particular campaign, it was all the young'uns and me, and it happened to be at my house. We've been playing this campaign for about 8 sessions, when a player has to bow out due to it being the only night that he and his girlfriend both have off. The Dungeon Master mentions that there is a new guy looking for a group, so we decided to give him a try. The day of the game, one of the younger players has apparently been having a bad day, as when I sit on the couch, he sits next to me and leans against me, so I put my arm around his shoulders and let him. The new guy comes in, sees this, and makes a borderline homophobic comment before sitting down. Major strike. I'm whispering to the snuggly player, asking him if he wants me to make the guy leave, but snuggly player is saying no that he can't handle a scene right now. I say okay, but he's not going to be allowed back. The dungeon master sits down, and the new player looks at me and says, Is Grandma really going to sit here and watch the whole game? Cause if she is, she better keep her mouth shut about how I play my character. Dungeon master basically asks what the fuck, and it turns out that the new guy was planning on playing a character that was going to be a rapist and added that if one of the characters was gay, his character was going to kill them and blah blah blah, and that having women at the table just led to problems. He started throwing out homophobic slurs, and then trying to gaslight us by pulling out the what, can't you guys take a joke? line. I'm quiet through most of this, because I'm trying to keep Snuggly Player from having an anxiety attack from all of this, but Dungeon Master immediately put it to a vote and new player was unanimously told to leave. He proceeded to throw a gigantic shit fit, to the point that wizard and cleric had to literally drag him out of my home. He then decided to whip it out and piss on my car while screaming, and the cleric player, who knows his way around my house cause he pet sits for me, turned the sprinklers on to finally make him leave. All things considered, we decided to game anyway. The characters don't manage to achieve much during the game itself, mostly because they are putting more effort into making sure Snuggly Player is cheered up and doing okay than actually accomplishing the in-game goals, but it seems like it works, and he's laughing by the time the session ends. Then, just as they were leaving, the new player's mother shows up and starts screaming at my group, hurling abuse at them for being mean to her little boy. She claimed that they'd assaulted him, and that she called the cops and was going to have them all arrested. She even went so far as to grab the arm of the snuggly player, and jerk him almost off his feet. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the story of how and why I punched a gamer's mother and got her arrested by the cops that she herself had summoned. Don't mess with my kids. P.S. Snuggly player is doing much better now and now has a much better job than the horrible one that had started off his bad day. Well, all I have to say is that that game mom is badass, 
And it is clear from the interaction between her and that player's mom that the apple didn't fall far from the tree there. My only complaint on how this was handled would be that OP didn't kick that player right off the bat, as it was her house, but I can understand being more concerned about the player she was comforting. Thankfully, it sounds like they all had a better time after the player was told to leave, and it's good to hear that snuggly player found a better job. Plus, I know how awesome it is to have a player, or in my case, a DM, that makes cookies for everyone. And I think that is a perfect segue to give her Twitch stream a shout out. So if you're into watching game streams, be sure to go follow her there under the name Comfy Kiwi. But with that said, let's move on to the next one. Dungeon Master Makes Adventuring Too Expensive by Reddit user Astral Bard. Some details have been changed since I'm no longer friends with this DM and don't want him stalking my reddit. This is pretty light as far as horror stories go, but I figured it might serve as a cautionary tale. This dungeon master had been super excited for a while to run a seafaring exploration-based sandbox campaign and rounded up myself and a few others to play. This dungeon master had previously run the best campaign I have ever played in and was super excited about the setting he had planned for this one. So even though the system wasn't the sort of thing I normally play, I was hyped for this. The game starts with our ship wrecking upon an island that hosted an independent city-state. We were taken to the head magistrates of the city-state and were told that we could stay, but that we would basically have to spend all of our starting cash on work documents to be allowed to live and work here. A weird way to start an adventure but we were willing to give the Dungeon Master the benefit of the doubt. And then, the Dungeon Master pulls out the calculator and starts telling us how much rent for an apartment for our characters is going to cost, how much we need to spend on food each day, etc. And then lists a bunch of menial, low-paying jobs that our characters can do to make money, though with the promise that we might get promotions later and be paid slightly more. How exciting. Again. A very weird start for what was pitched as a seafaring sandbox campaign, but maybe he's going somewhere with this. He was not going anywhere fun with this. The majority of the first session was spent describing our characters' lives in this city day by day, in grueling detail. How we worked our menial jobs, making us roll for how well we did, lest we get fired. How much we spent on living expenses and what little we could save at the end of each day. Toward the end of the session, we finally got something approaching a plot hook when one of the characters rolled particularly well at his job and overheard some co-workers talking about a tiny island some distance away where there was supposedly treasure to be found. Bingo. But remember, dear reader, that our ship had been destroyed at the start of the first session and there was no way our characters could afford a new one on our meager salaries. We eventually figured out through some skill checks that we could hire a ship and crew to take us to this island, and again, the Dungeon Master laid out in excruciating detail all of the costs that this would entail in crew and supply. We should have taken them aside right then, but we were just so excited to have something resembling a plot hook. The next session begins. Does he skip ahead to when we've saved up enough to charter our ship and head to the island? Nope. More dull descriptions of uneventful days. Towards the middle of session 2, the other players and I started to grumble. It would take weeks in-game to save up for this, and at the rate we were going, that meant multiple sessions of nothing but the roleplay equivalent of TV static. The Dungeon Master assured us that he had a plan and asked that we just hold out a little longer, but he must not have had a lot of confidence in that plan, because no Session 3 was ever scheduled. Well, that sure sounded like a test of endurance for a Dungeons & Dragons game. Isn't the whole point of D&D to be able to escape from the mundane of everyday life and roleplay being adventurers? It just sounds to me like that Dungeon Master wanted to roleplay being an accountant Though part of me wonders if they would have made it to the Treasure Island if there would have been a Session 3. 
Who knows? Let's move on. Boom, you're on your period. By Reddit user, Whoosh the Goblin. This is about a dungeon master who I no longer play under, but have no end of horror stories about. The group was all guys, and normally, the players would run male characters. Though, I sometimes ran female characters at the table, and so did a few of the other guys. But this dungeon master's behavior applies pretty evenly across all instances of female characters. About once a session, he would ask a random female player character to roll a constitution saving throw. On a roll that he deemed sufficiently low, he would proclaim, Boom, you're on your period. A player character with sufficiently low constitution could experience up to a dozen periods a month, and he would dole out various penalties for this. My rogue would get disadvantage on her stealth check, because the creatures can smell your blood, and characters would get disadvantage on persuasion or insight checks, because you're too emotional and erratic. This guy was a nightmare of a dungeon master for so many other reasons and I just look back on the time playing under him and use it to remind myself of how much I appreciate the DM I currently have. Well, that was the story. I would say that it sounds like OP is no longer playing under this DM. I mean, that is kind of BS, and a bit sexist, to have the characters have disadvantage on things for that, let alone making the players roll for it, and I'm not sure if the Dungeon Master understands female anatomy or not, but I would say that it's the latter, if the dozen periods in one month was any indication. And I have to agree with OP on the stance that hearing about Dungeon Masters like this really does make me appreciate the one I have. Let's move on. Putting your dump stat in reading comprehension By Reddit user CuriousWombat42 this is, in hindsight, more funny than horror, but it's things like these that make online DMing just a pain. I used to do short campaigns and one-shots on a community Discord server, where dungeon masters could put a recruitment post with information about the game in a channel, and then people would join in on a semi-first-come, first-served basis. And I swear, the inability of some people to read through a couple of bullet points before joining will always surprise me. My favorite one, with multiple at once, was the following. The Recruitment Post, Warhammer Fantasy 4th Edition, will be played on Clear Day of the Week, start in an hour, plus time zone, give or take an hour. Core Rules Only, Beginner Friendly, New Players Welcome and will be taught the basics before the first session, by messaging me. And Characters will be made together during the first session. From the six players who responded, only two actually understood those rules. The other four were The American, who apparently did not understand the concept of time zones, and did not ask about it either, until after missing the first session. Upset that we started without them while they were at work, and then dropped out. The confused one, who adamantly believed that we were playing some homebrew D&D game, did not join the new player pre-explained session because they played lots of times before, then took half of session 1 to understand that this was indeed not D&D 5e at all, after many attempts. Actually renamed, and I think enjoyed the game, even though they still tried doing D&D things out of habit from start to finish. The veteran that brought a fully done, non-core rules character with suspiciously high stat lines to the table ranting about how they weren't allowed to play that one, and had to make a new one like everyone else. Got kicked after insulting me, and being rude to the new players, for not knowing all of the rules already, and wasting his time. The uncooperative one, who, after joining, demanded that we completely change the designated game days to fit their personal schedule, dropped after telling me off for being too inflexible to be a good dungeon master, and then blocked me. Yeah, I guess that's just the risk you take when you post a game for anyone that you don't know to join. Maybe it could be the excitement of playing a game, or just the over-self-confidence of some people. 
But if you're going to join an online game, for God's sakes, read the rules. Let's move on. The Mean Girl by Reddit user Six Syllable Catchphrase After lurking here for quite a while, I'm ready to share one of my own. To spare you a bunch of useless backstory, let's cut to the chase. It was a College Gamers Guild club back in 2005. I was running one of my first campaigns ever, and it was 3.5, so there was a lot of stupid minutia being hung up on as a new DM. Being a college club, we didn't really get to pick and choose who could be in our games, so I'm sure that there was a lot more RPG horror stories happening all the time. One of my players, Dirk, was an aficionado douche. He had been playing since Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, and didn't mind letting anyone know about it. We didn't have the word gatekeeping back then, but this dude was that to a T, continually challenging other new players' knowledge, ideas, and worthiness to play this free game. But what's she gonna do? He had been relegated by the club overlords to my game, he owned his own dice, and he knew the rules, which is an understatement. Whatever. Over the first few sessions, there was some problematic behavior from Dirk. Invalidating other player characters' choices, like saying, uh, insert class race here, would never perfectly reasonable action. Going into great detail about his Yon T's physique in a way that didn't make sense to me until I learned what a furry was. He would occasionally make comments under his breath when things didn't go his way, but it was tolerable but barely. We got through about a half a dozen sessions of my half-baked campaign without issue. Everyone seemed to be having fun, and even Dirk seemed to be pretty invested. And then, one day, one of my players came to me to show me Dirk's MySpace page. This was back when MySpace, and social media in general, were still relatively new, and I didn't really engage with that stuff at the time. It turns out that Dirk the Jerk had been publicly and vociferously dunking on my campaign, the other player characters, and me, not just as a DM, but as a person. It was typical edgelord crap, mixed with a healthy dose of I am very smart. Tearing my narrative and setting apart, making fun of my mannerisms, as I had a speech impediment, and saying some pretty nasty, violent crap that would for sure get you banned from a social network in 2022. And for someone who basically sucked ass, he sure had a lot of friends for 2005 MySpace, and they sure seemed to like his field reports about my game, players, and person. I wish I could tell you that I had some kind of awesome FU moment, where I killed his character, or humiliated him at the table in some way. But instead, I just got hurt. I ditched my own fairly successful game, and only ever played with people I knew for the rest of college. Sorry, I wish I had something more cathartic, but that's not how life works sometimes. So, F you Dirk, I hope you actually read this. You perpetually smelled like Funyuns, you never once used the phrase de facto correctly, you cheated on your roles, and I never said anything about it. I hope you only roll ones forever from here on out. Ah yes, the I've been playing since yada yada player. It is really annoying when someone who has been into something for a while thinks that they are better than the people just discovering whatever it may be. You would think that people that have been into a certain thing for a while would be excited and encourage newcomers, but some people are just a-holes. But that didn't seem to bother OP too much, but when OP found Dirk's MySpace page, dunking on everyone in the group and the campaign as a whole, I can understand how that can be deflating to someone new to the game. Here's hoping that Dirk eventually grew up and looks back on that crap with some moniker of shame. And hopefully, this didn't sour OP's taste for Dungeons & Dragons for that long afterwards. But that is all I have for you today. As always, I appreciate all of you, and may your games remain horror story free. Until next time.